Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about assessments in obsessive compulsive disorder. I am Dr. Suresh Padadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to place this disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose only. For clinical opinion, please do contact a psychiatrist. Conflict of interest? None. The objective of this video is to discuss about the assessment in obsessive compulsive disorder, need for structured assessment, and how structured assessment is done. The target audience for this video is psychiatrist, doctors, mental health professionals, nurses, persons with mental illness and their family members. The question is, why should we do structured assessments? Where should we do? Invariably, structured assessments are not required in all OCD patients. They are required in certain set of patients, such as when there is treatment resistance, treatment refractory, and if you are in academic training institution to train PG students for the purpose of research, monitoring the progress of treatment, especially when the patient is not responding and you are planning for a neurosurgery, that time structured assessment is very essential. Not only that, these assessments can be done either on OP basis or in patient basis. Time required is 90 to 120 minutes. As I mentioned here, again, I would like to emphasize that these assessments are not required for all OCD patients. It is required in subset of patients who are treatment resistant or difficult to treat or else when there is comorbidity is very high. Let's understand OCD. OCD is a chronic waxing and waning neuropsychiatric disorder characterized by obsessions and compulsions. Lifetime prevalence of OCD is 1 to 3%. Hence, Eric Colander has said that it is a hidden epidemic. That means, majority of the time, OCD is a very secretive disease. Many patients do not disclose their symptoms to their family members. And if even the family members come to know, they do not want to tell the society. The reason being is stigma. And also, it is a very absurd illness. OCD means they have obsessions and compulsions. Obsessions are repetitive thoughts, images and impulses which are repetitive in nature, intrusive, time consuming and distressing and most of the patient know they are absurd, senseless and useless thoughts. Coming to compulsions, compulsions are motor or cognitive acts which are repetitive, intrusive, time consuming but it relieves anxiety. So these are the hallmark of obsessive compulsive disorder. At the same time, even the insight into the symptoms varies. At one end, they have a good insight. On the other hand, poor insight amounting to delusions. The insight varies within the patient and also across patient population. At the height of the anxiety, the patient may say, I believe in these thoughts. When he does not have anxiety, he says, they are all absurd thoughts. Now moving to comorbidity in OCD. As I mentioned earlier also in the previous videos, comorbidity is the rule in OCD. Two-thirds of the OCD patients will have another psychiatric diagnosis. Hence, please check for comorbidity such as depression, panic disorder, social phobia, generalized anxiety disorder, tic disorder, eating disorder, bipolar disorder, personality disorder, and substance abuse. These are common in OCD patient. Further, OCD also cuts across many psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia. If you look into schizophrenia patient, 20 to 40 percent of the schizophrenia patient have OC symptoms. At the same time, bipolar affective disorder patient, if you look into OC symptoms, 20 to 30 percent will have. And also depression, in that also we can see OC symptoms. Further, if you look into OC spectrum disorders and many neurological conditions has OC symptoms. If you look at the OC spectrum disorders, these are all cluster of disorders which have similar phenomenology that is repetitive thoughts, presumed etiology, familial transmission, response to similar pharmacological agent. Hence, they were considered as OC spectrum disorders. Let's look into OC spectrum disorders. On one hand, you can see neurological disorders such as Tourette's, Tics, Pandas, Autism and Sedanam Chorea. 
and also on the other end of the spectrum you can see preoccupation with body sensation and appearance like BDD that is body dysmorphophobia, hypochondriasis and anoroxia nervosa and if you look at the impulse disorders they are trichotillomania, pathological gambling, kleptomania and self-injurious behavior. Hence we need to know whether OCD patient also has a comorbid OC spectrum disorders. Now let's discuss what is the need for structured assessments. The structured assessment is required in certain subset of OCD patients when OCD symptoms since it varies within patient across time. Five years back patient would have had obsessive fear of contamination and washing compulsion but in this year he may have aggressive obsession and cognitive compulsion hence there is a need for structured assessment and also across patient these symptoms vary and as I mentioned earlier comorbidity is the rule hence we need to check for comorbidity and treat it just identifying OCD and treating is not the goal we need to comprehensively treat the patient or look for comorbidity and OCD patient also have a varying insight at the same time treatment is for longer duration hence structured assessment sometimes becomes mandatory at the same time we need to identify mental compulsions because many a time the patients may not tell about the mental compulsions at the same time you also check for proxy compulsions that is family members may be doing compulsions on behalf of the patients at the same time we also look for avoidance many patients avoid doing certain things because it will provoke anxiety and also we need to look for triggers for obsessions and compulsion and also insight assessments at last you need to know the family accommodation how the family is able to cope the OCD symptoms because OCD does not affect an individual it affects the whole family hence you need to assess the family functioning and how the family is accommodating the patient symptoms if you are doing therapy a comprehensive assessment is a must and also monitoring of the patient's treatment, treatment response, severity of illness and progression of illness is must. Hence, need for assessment sometimes becomes mandatory. Let's look into the assessment of comorbidity in OCD. As I mentioned earlier, comorbidity is the rule. Hence, we need to check for various comorbidity. How to do that? Use a diagnostic instruments so that you can check list to know whether, whether the patient has depression, or else has social anxiety disorder GAD hence you need to have a structured instrument like DSM-5 SCID-5 what we call it a structured clinical interview for DSM-5 that can be used or else mini international neuropsychiatric interview both of them are copyrighted hence you need to take permission but however scan 2.1 that is scheduled for clinical assessment in neuropsychiatry is by WHO it is free that can be used moving to the assessment of symptoms in OCD that is obsession and compulsion first and the foremost you need to know what are the instruments the instrument to assess the obsession compulsions commonly used is Elbron OCD scale Latin obsessional inventory scale Vancouver OC inventory scale and National Institute of Mental Health global obsessive compulsive scale these are the four commonest scale are used but however across the world Y box is very famous used across various pharmacological research and also pharmacotherapy research and CBT research Y box is free hence we use Y box even in Niemann's OCD clinic so today I'll be discussing about Y box scale that is L Brown obsessive compulsive checklist and severity rating scale let's move into the checklist here the checklist for obsession and compulsion are there in in the obsession section and also compulsion section you are going to check for whether it is in the past or in the present past usually it will be considered more than one year or else one month or else present it is there or not you'll be looking into the checklist of obsession either it is contamination somatic aggressive sexual you need to ask and give examples then only the many of the patient will be able to say yes I had the symptoms one year back five year back they will be able to tell similarly with regard to compulsion whether it was in the past or in the present so here also you'll be marking tick asking whether it is there or not present 
or in the past. This is how the Y box symptom checklist looks like. Moving to the severity rating scale of Y box. This is a very important rating scale which is available free of cost. Please use even in the clinical setting. There are 10 items. They are 5 for obsession, 5 for compulsions. These 5 which are commonly used in the Y box severity rating scale is time spent in obsession, time spent in compulsion, distress because of obsession, distress because of compulsion, interference because of obsessions and interference because of compulsions, resistance and control both because of obsession and compulsion. As I mentioned, 5 items for each obsession and compulsion. Here before you do the administration of Y box, although it is a patient self-administered Y box in India, it has to be administered by the clinician. Before you administer, you need to clearly educate the patient the meaning of obsession and meaning of compulsion. Hence, once the patient has understood what is obsession and compulsion, then you will be using Y box severity rating scale. The time spent is very easy to understand. What is the time spent in the 24 hours in obsession? Similarly, time spent in compulsion. You need to be very specific. What is obsession and compulsion whether the patient has understood. With regard to distress, again, patient need to say how much he is distressed because of obsession, how much he is distressed because of compulsion. Now coming to interference. That is, how much obsession is interfering in his day-to-day -day activities. Same time, how much is the interference because of compulsion. Coming to resistance. Resistance means before the thought enters into his mind, how much resistance he is able to offer. That is called as resistance. Similarly, before the patient starts doing the compulsion, how much resistance he is able to offer. That is resistance. Now coming to the control. Control means once the patient has entered into the patient's mind, how well he is able to control those thoughts. Similarly, control with regard to compulsion, compulsion means if the patient starts doing compulsion, how much he is able to control it. And each item is scored from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is the severe, that means 4 is given. If it is not there, 0 is given. So this is how Y box severity rating scale is done. The maximum score is 40. Clinical OCD is 16, equal to 16 or more. And if the patient has less than 8, we call it as recovery after treatment. And if the patient is less than 16, means he is in remission. Coming to the severity of Y box, if the patient is less than 7, we call it as subclinical, 8 to 15, mild, 16 to 23, we call it as moderate OCD, 24 to 31 is severe, anything above 32 to 40, we call it as extreme case or profound severely ill patients. This is how Y box severity rating scale looks like. Moving to the insight into the illness. What is insight? Recognizing that obsession and compulsion are senseless, unwanted, absurd thoughts and action. If the patient is able to say that he has this, that means insight is there. 15 to 30 percent of the patients do not have insight. They believe these symptoms or these thoughts are very important and they should believe in that. And these sometimes insight fluctuates in the same patient across time. Poor insight is common and especially in 15 to 30 percent. And it is a poor predictor of response to treatment, severe OCD, and even they may not cooperate cognitive behavioral therapy. Moving to the Y box 11 item. This is for insight. Again, zero means excellent insight. One is good insight. Two is fair insight. Three is poor insight and four, lack of insight, almost delusional conviction. There are anchor points given for a Y box item, 11, now item number 11. Moving to the other important assessment, that is family accommodation scale for OCD. There are self-rated version for relatives, self-rated version, the patient is being developed now. At the same time, family accommodation scale rated by the interviewer that is by the clinician or else by the mental health professional is available here i'm going to discuss about the family accommodation scale done by the relative himself let's understand first what is family accommodation 
family accommodation in ocd means it refers to family members or significant others participating in or facilitating patient rituals and or avoidance basically proxy compulsion or proxy rituals i would like to give certain examples if the family members provide reassurance repeatedly many times that is family accommodation waiting for the patients to complete compulsion that means patient family members are waiting outside the bathroom for 2 to 3 hours so that the patient finishes his washing directly participating in compulsion patient often sometimes unable to wash clothes family members help him out this again accommodation involving in patient rituals patient wants certain way to clean his room he is unable to do it family members are doing for him that is the ritual they have now adopted providing items needed for compulsions it may be providing water providing dettol providing other materials so that the patient continues to have the symptoms taking up patient responsibilities imagine a housewife has ocd she is washing compulsion she is unable to do any other work the husband is doing the rest of the patient responsibility modifying the family's routine because the patient has ocd since the patient gets up at around 8 o'clock and he will be engaged in the bathroom for next 3 hours that is from 9 to 12 o'clock during that time nobody will use bathroom hence the family gets up early in the morning and they finish their early morning chorus that is again they are changing avoiding in the anxiety provoking situation that means they avoid certain triggers so that the patient do not see them like if the patient sees dirt he will become anxious hence the family members clean the room very ultra clean they will do it again that is family accommodation and here in family accommodation scale there are two parts part one is looking for the checklist of symptoms in the past one week here the relative will recognize what are the obsession the patient has and also what are the compulsions he has in the past one week absent or present that is part one part two of the questionnaire is rating the symptom in the past one month how much he is doing every day alternate day or three days a week that is depending upon the severity 0 to 4 it is done there are 19 different items which needs to be scored hence the minimum score is 0 and maximum score in this scale is 76 this is how the family accommodation scale done rating done by the relative is looks like this there is another which i mentioned family accommodation scale done by the interviewer here it is a 12 domain interview rating scale here relatives will be interviewed by the interviewer it may be clinician or else mental health professional there are 12 domains will be asked and the patient's relative will answer and depending upon that the rating is done zero means never one means once a week two means two to three times a week three means four to six times a week four is equal to every day and maximum score is 36 more the score the severe the family accommodation more the severe the family accommodation that means it is not only the patient requires ocd medication therapy family therapy is required here family psychoeducation is required here hence family accommodation needs to be addressed at the earliest moving to the severity and improve, improvement rating scale invariably we talked about why box it is only in the domain of ocd but however you want to know the clinical global impression severity rating scale that is cgi scale which we call it as done by guy et al which is available free of cost it is rated from 1 to 7 One is normal, seven is the most extremely ill. Depending upon the situation, you are going to rate the scale. Severity is done usually at the baseline. One is normal, two is borderlinely mentally ill, three is mildly ill, four is moderately ill, five is markedly ill, six is severely ill, and seven among the most extremely ill cases. Now moving to the improvement scale. Again, it is rated from one to seven. One is very much improved. 7 is much worse 2 is much improved 3 is minimally improved 4 is no change 5 is mildly worse 6 is moderately worse 7 is much worse so using the cgi that is clinical global impression 
both for severity and improvement gives a global improvement or severity of the patient. To conclude, my dear friends, OCD is a chronic waxing and waning neuropsychiatric disorder. It requires structured assessment in subset of patients. I would rather say around 30 to 40 percent who are treatment resistant, who have comorbidity, who have severe side effects with medication, who needs neurosurgery. For them, the structured assessment is required. Further, the structured assessment is also required in research and in tertiary care where we do training of students. Hence, we need to do the structured assessment so that we are able to look for the comorbidity and address at the earliest. Most of the scales are self-administered. And these tools become very important when neurosurgical intervention is planned in OCD symptoms. And my dear friends, I'll be doing a separate video on neurosurgical intervention in treatment refractory OCD. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.